There is no other name. 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 Hallelujah. Glory. 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 You know the the Father. The Father has exalted Jesus and has given him the name that is above every name. Now, now that's not just something for us to, you know, religiously say, of, but that's the truth. That name will set you free. That name will bring health to your body. That name will bring peace to your mind. That name will bring joy to your home. The name. Hallelujah. And the name, listen to me, listen to me, the name, the name of Jesus will do as much for you as you will allow it to. Yeah, yeah, the name. See, see, Jesus, oh, glory to God. You see, when he left, he left us with his name. Thank you, Father. Amen. Praise God. See, the Father has given all authority unto Jesus. See, remember when Jesus was raised from the dead, he said, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. And then he looks at us and say, go in my name. See, I don't know if you know that or not. But Jesus, the power that was relinquished to him by the Father, uh-huh. He has given unto us. Yeah. Thank yeah. you, Lord God. Thank you, Father. Now, when in Mark's account, He says it flat and plain. In my name, go. Preach this gospel to every creature. In my name, you will cast out devils. You will speak with new tongues. Yeah, yeah. If you drink any deadly thing, it will not hurt you. That's right. That's right. You shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Glory. Hallelujah. With the name. And I want you to know that that name has never been taken back from you. Of course, the devil don't want you to know that. But I don't. I don't care about him. The name. No, it's the name. See, you, you, there's, no, there, there, there's never any reason for you to, you know, you, you see, nobody can take the name of Jesus from you. Nobody can take it from you. They can put you in jail. They can fasten your feet in stock. But they can't take the name from it. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. See, see, you supposed to see you need to know that. Because see, some you need that name. You need it. You you need that name. You need that name. I I I need it. I need it. I need it. Amen. I need it. So, so there's never, so <laughs> the name, you always a winner. Yes. Glory, hallelujah. You always a winner. That's right. You got the name of Jesus. He gave you, he's given his name unto you and I. That's right. That's right. In my name you go. Oh, yeah. Now, of course, if, if, if that's just something to say on Sunday, you know, and, and when you feeling spiritual, uh, 
then it's a different story. No, no, no. See, the name of Jesus is for you to use all the time. Amen. And I got some news for you while I'm at it. You don't have to feel spiritual, so to speak. You can be feeling dry as shucks. And the name of Jesus will work just as right. mighty much then Amen. as it will when, you, when you're feeling all goosey. Your feeling, no, I don't really need to know this because sometimes people, you know, they get, they get a little down. You know what they call, I don't know, I guess they call it being down. But I want you to know that the name of Jesus does not work based on how you feel. That's right, amen. amen. Thank you, my Lord. Thank the name of Jesus will work based on how you use it. Thank you, my Lord. Amen. amen. Not how you feel. See, I, I know what it feels like when you, you know, you feeling all dry and feel like, dear God, you couldn't get a prayer through if you tried. You know, I know what that feels like, but it ain't got a thing to do with you. Your relationship with Jesus have not changed one ounce. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Praise God. When the devil show up and tell you that you're not going to make it, you know, your relationship with the Father have not changed one ounce. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Don't let your feelings rob you of the life that Jesus come to give you. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. I know what feeling like. I know what it's like. I, shucks, I, my feelings, they get so, I just don't, I just go numb. I'm not moved by what I feel. Amen. Amen. I'm moved by what this book says. You mess around and you start operating on what you feel. Shucks. Won't get much. Amen. But bless God in my name, yes. he said. Yes. <laughs> Jesus. That's right. Hallelujah. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In my name. name. Remember that. Remember that. You have the name of Jesus. Yes. There is, you always have the victory. Yes. You always have the victory. Yes. Whoever, whatever is born of God overcomes the world. That's right. Yes. This is the victory. Yes. Our faith. Thank you, my Lord. Yes. This is the victory. Yes. I got faith in the name. Faith in the name. Yes. <laughs> That's right. I've got faith in the name. Yes. You know, when Peter and John went up to the temple at the hour of prayer, they got laying up there, all piled up there at that gate, begging and carrying on. Peter said, In the name. <laughs> in the name of Jesus. Get up from there. And they was all excited about it. Peter said, it's the name. Amen. Through faith in the name has made this man whole in whom you see. It's the name. Well, has the name lost its power? Has the name lost its punch? No. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. 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 So you can lift up your head and be ye lifted up your everlasting right. doors and the king of glory. Oh, yes. Yes. Hallelujah. The king of glory yes. is in. Yes. Not shall come in. He's in. Yes. Jesus is in the house. Jesus is in the house. Amen. Amen. Jesus is in the house. I tell you, I'm, I more and more want people to understand the reality of God having relationship with Jesus. I, I tell you, I, I just, I want us to live this. It's real. This is not just something to talk about. It's not something for Sunday morning. It's not something when you go to church. It's something for all the time. Amen. Amen. Dear God, you can live Amen. Amen. by faith Amen. victoriously all the time. Yes, Hallelujah. Right. Yes, know that. Know that for sure. Amen. Know that for sure. Yes. Know that for sure. Know that for sure that, that you can live like this. You can walk in God's love, God's wonderful love all the time. You can be full of joy all the time. You can have your needs met all the time. Glory to that's the wonderful life that Jesus come to give us. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
We used to go to church and the people we used to, we used to call it getting happy. Y'all know what I'm talking about? <laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking about? We used to call it getting happy. You, know, you get happy, you jump, on, you jump around, jump, jump around and shout. I found that I could be happy all the time. Right. Hallelujah, glory to God. I don't have to go to church to get happy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so 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 got happy in church today. I said, yeah. yeah, she got happy. Yeah. Well, I I'm happy all the time. Yeah. I'm happy. I'm happy all the time. Well, I'm full of joy. I'm full of joy. Amen. I'm full of joy. Praise Hallelujah. God. Glory to God. This is a good life. I'm telling you, this is a wonderful life. It's a good life. It's it's and it's worth living. You know, I fig you know I figure like this. I figure if Jesus would purchase it for me, at least I can do it live it. Amen. I mean that's real. I figure if he purchased this for me, you know, at least I can do is live it. You know, he purchased my salvation on Calvary. Thank you, Jesus. You know, he loves me. And he purchased my salvation on Calvary. And if he purchased it for me, I kind of feel like it's unfair for me not to live it. You know, when you look, when somebody, when someone go through, you know, great, you know, uh, to, to, to get something for you and you treat it like it's nothing. That's not, I don't think that's fair. I really don't. You know, like you, you know, like you go out and work and buy stuff for your kids and they just tear them and the door don't pay pay attention to it. You know? Buy them a car they record the first day. They kind of put you out with them, wouldn't it? Well, look at what Jesus purchased for us. And sometimes we treat it like it's like it's nothing. Like, you know, come on. This is precious life that you can only have through Jesus Christ. He purchased my salvation on Calvary. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory. 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 Amen. 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 All right. All right. Turn to the book of Philippians. We are exploring the book of Philippians. Um, some wonderful information here, some wonderful things that God has outlined here for us to learn from. Paul, the apostle, is the author of this epistle. And um, as I began to read this and look at it and study it a little bit, I, you know, it's interesting. I'm looking at the attitude of the apostle. And certainly, he is, he is an apostle to the Gentiles. And we all know that. We go back and Jesus called him. And we read about the calling of Paul in the book of Acts when he was on his way to Damascus. I never saw a guy change so quick. Dear Lord Jesus. And he was, on, he was headed down there to kill Christians. And bless God, he was, before he could get to Damascus, he's preaching to Christians, preaching Jesus. Boy, you talk about a quick transition. That's why I tell people when they think they're in trouble, I said, God, turn that thing around overnight. Amen. Paul went into the authorities to get permission to go down and bring, drag the Christians back. You know what I mean? Went down to Damascus, on his way down. He had my crew. And he's on his way down to Damascus, Christian hunting. And God got a hold to him. Straighten him out. Now, then Jesus gave him a calling. He sent him to the Gentiles. Now, you got to know that Jesus came to the Jews. And, you know, he makes that clear when he was ministering on the earth. He says, I have come on to the house, lost sheep of the house of Israel. And then he came and then he, when he, now when he had done the work that the father had sent him to do and fulfill the law through his ministry, then a door was opened to everyone. Of course, the Jews still, still, still thought it was just for them. But, you know, God had to teach them, you know. And Peter was specifically used when he went down to Cornelius' house to minister unto them when he went in to the Gentiles. Amen. You know what I mean? And he, he preached a sermon down there that opened up the door to let it be known that this is the new covenant era. And now this gospel is to be preached to everyone. But now Paul was specifically called an apostle to the Gentiles because you got to teach Gentiles a little different from the way you teach the Jews. Gentiles didn't know anything, but the Jews, they knew the law. And so the Jews, they had to know Jesus 
through the law and had to be transitioned from the law. But the Gentiles didn't know anything. They were just heathen, worship, worshiping all kinds of stuff. Yeah. You know what I mean? Trees and dogs and whatever else they're hauling at. But, but then they just had to come to Jesus. They, just, they, just, they were just preached Jesus. And, and it was not so much for them to know that this Jesus was the Christ because they didn't know anything about this Jesus. Amen. But the Jews had been taught this Jesus. And Moses had talked about this Jesus. And then when Paul went down to uh, uh, Damascus and, and one of the first, his first sermons that he preached uh, was that this truly this Jesus is the Christ, you see. Now, we, G, G, he went to the Gentiles and he preached to us that Jesus was the Savior, the Son of God, to come to save the whole world, you see. And so he just preached Christ to us. We didn't have to do any unlearning. We just had to just take hold to Jesus. The Jews, they had to unlearn some of that stuff that they had learned, and they had to transition from Judaism into Christianity. And so Paul was sent with a specific message to the Gentiles and Peter and the other apostles. They, in fact, they made it clear they were going to the Jews, to the, uh, to the uh, lost sheep of the house of Israel. But Paul was sent specifically to the Gentiles. However, he did preach to the Jews as well. Now, this letter to the uh, Philippians is a message that the apostle is writing to the church that Philippi and, and, and you look at the life of the apostle and his life is a depiction of what a Christian is supposed to be like. I think in our present day culture, one of our major problems today is we don't even know what a Christian's supposed to be like. You know, you know now I, I try my best to set my life as an example to show what a Christian looks like. But sometimes it's hard to find a good Christian that you can just follow. Because, you know, we, we just, you know, chasing after so much stuff. And, and I'm just being honest. I can, I can preach to you straight like this. To find someone that's really holding up the bloodstained banner and that can be an example for you to follow. Well, the, we, the Gentiles needed that. Because they didn't know what a Christian was supposed to look like. Amen. They were just, you know, in fact, you remember the church that car in, man, they was cutting the road. They were doing all kinds of stuff. They went to church, they got drunk at church yeah. and thought it was all right. Because yeah. I've seen that in modern day, and they knew better, yeah. but they're still drunk. Yeah. I remember that as a youngster. This fella came to church drunk. And went to argue with the preacher while the preacher was preaching. I thought, dear Lord, I've never seen anything like this before. They had to take him out of there. Yeah, wow. One of the deacons got up there and set him down, you know, because he was up there you know, talking back to the preacher. He was drunk. Wow. That's what he was. Uh -huh. But he wasn't in Corinth. He knew better. Yeah. You know, but, but, but my point is that the, the, there had to be examples set. And so Paul is an example of a Christian and how we are supposed to conduct ourselves. Now, as we look at this lesson here, we look at this epistle here, you're going to see some things that's going to jolt you, and I trust that it does. You're going to see what a Christian is supposed to be. Because when I talk to people, when I interact with people, you know, and I see Christians, uh, they, don't, they think it's strange when opposition arises. But there's nothing strange about that. That's perfectly normal. But we treat it like, like whoa. Whoa. I was broadsided. Well, Christians are broadsided all the time. Yeah. But, but Peter writing, in his writing, he said, don't think it's strange when you fall into various trials. Paul, now this letter that's written to the Philippians, he was in jail when he wrote the letter. Amen. That's strange. That's different right there. Here's a Christian in jail. Here's, here's the apostle. The apostle is in jail. Well, well that's all right. It's no big deal. Gee, they took, they arrested Jesus. 
the authorities arrested him. They didn't just take him to jail, they crucified him. I'm, I'm wanting, I want you to see something here. See, we, we have this idea of what Christianity is like. And we have, it's all fixed in our minds. Christianity is a nice guy that lives on the corner house with a white picket fence and the three little kids and they're all dressed up real nice and, you know, and the family just walks out and everybody's just nice and happy and nobody never bothers with them. Everything is really nice and the father goes to work and he comes home and everybody goes for evening drive. Now you can do all of that, but that's not really the picture of a Christian. You follow what I'm saying? Yes. Now, everything that I just said, you can do that, but you're going to have to fight for it. Right. You're not going to just do that automatically. Right. You see, because devils are saying, no. Uh -huh. No, no, you cannot have this wonderful life. Right. But then you have the authority to demand to yeah. live it, and, and he can't do anything about it. That's right. You see. Amen. Amen. Now, first of all, Paul is writing this letter to the Philippians, and it's written from a jail cell. That, that's, that right there, I want, you, I want that to sink into you, that everything that this man is saying is from a jail cell where he has been arrested, put in jail for preaching. You know the story about the, what happened with Paul down at Philippi. When him and Silas was down there and they put him in jail. And they put, not they just put him in jail, put him in, put him in stocks. And they had a meeting down there, had a prayer meeting in jail. Now, I, I'm, I'm saying this and I'm, I'm going to say it nice and slow because I want this to sink into you. He's, went, he's down in the 16th chapter of, of Acts. He's in jail. He is for preaching. He is placed in jail just for preaching the gospel. That's why he is there. Because he's, he is living, he is standing up for righteousness. He is standing up for the gospel. He is preaching the gospel. The devil don't want the gospel to preach. It wasn't the people that arrested him. It was the devil that did that. Because the devil don't want the gospel preached. You are living a holy life. The devil don't want you to do that. And he's going to come at you in every way he can. He came at Paul and he arrested them and put them in jail. In the 16th chapter of Acts, I pick up at the, uh, just, and I'm going to read this. Well, let me pick up at the 16th verse of the 16th chapter. 16, 16. It's a good number. Don't play it. <laughs> now, it happened as we went to prayer. That's what Christians do. Now, I, don't, don't miss none of this. Don't, don't miss none of this. I, I might read it, but don't miss it. That's what Christians do. I say, that's what Christians do. I say, that's what Christians do. They go to prayer. Oh, I thought it was just supposed to be the pastor and the deacons to go to prayer. No, all the Christians go to prayer. You don't believe it? Show up here at 6 o'clock tomorrow morning. Oh, it's too early for me. See, see, see. I told you you don't know how to, what a Christian does. That's why I'm preaching, te teaching you what the Christians do. Yes, they go to prayer. Amen. That's Amen. why they have this book. Christians go to prayer. Amen. All right. Stay with me now. Don't lose me. Acts 16, 16. Now, it happened as we went to prayer that a certain slave girl possessed with the spirit of divination met us who brought her master's much profit by fortune telling. This girl followed Paul as, and us and cried out, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God who proclaimed to us the word, the, the way of salvation. Now, she wasn't really saying that in, in, a, in, a, in a positive way. It, it was the devil doing the talking. Uh -huh. And this she did for many days. But Paul greatly, annoyed, yes, began to annoy him. She, 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 ain't, she ain't preaching by the, she's she not, she not encouraging them by the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. That's she, she, by, the, by devils. You got to be able to know when a devil is saying amen and know when Jesus is saying amen. 
Oh, devil, do say amen, you know. All right, stay with me. I'm trying to show you how a Christian is. And this she did for many days. What is she doing? She is saying, these men are the servants of the most high God. That sounds like that ought to be pretty good. Who proclaim to us the way of salvation. Dear God, that sounds like that ought to be something good. Yeah, but, but you got to see what's behind that. See, I don't, oh, Lord Jesus. I tell you, I, I tell you, more people, when I, when I, people, I get these praises, the Lord's hallelujah, glory to God, and I look right through them. Yeah, yeah. I've had more praise, the Lord's hallelujah, you know, highly favored, blessed coming, blessed going, and I look right through that. I look, I, I peer right through it. I've seen through more of that junk than I do more of that. I'll tell you, I see right through it. I read through it. It's right there. I ain't living on the outside. But it sounds good. You know what I mean? All right, stay with me. But when her master saw that their hope of profit was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace to the authorities. You see what happened? All they're doing is about Jesus' business. And all of a sudden, the this is the police now, authorities. Arrest them, drag them, the, 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 the people seize them and bring them into the authorities. And they brought them to the magistrate and said, these men being Jews exceedingly trouble our city. See, just telling lies. And they teach customs which are not lawful for us being Romans to receive or observe. Then the multitude rose up together against them. And the magistrate, now the police get in on it. Uh -huh. The judge tore off their clothes and commanded them to be beaten. You see that? You said, but I thought, I thought they were Christian. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden, they didn't have to get a whipping. These are grown men. I'm not talking about no kid. These are grown men getting a beating. This is back when they'd whip you out in public. They'd put you to this, you know, they'd whip you. Because I don't know if that's, that's not a bad thing, you know. I think it dropped the crime level. If they still whip them, but they don't allow you to whip them anymore. They wait till you get them out and bar, then they knock them in the head with the sticks. <laughs> but they don't whip you out in the public. They hit you with the sticks after they arrest you, see, and then they act like they didn't hit you. <laughs> Next time you look, you're looking half up in the air, I head all twisted. And, right? So why does he look like that? See, he didn't look like that when they arrested him. Right, right. Yeah. You all don't do that, do you? <laughs> And when they had laid many stripes on them, they threw them into prison. Look at that. Not just arrest them, not just beat them, but throw them in prison. But what did they do? All they, do, all they did is went to prayer meeting. They went to prayer meeting. Like Christians, acting like Christians. That's all they're doing is acting like Christians. I'm trying to show you what I'm trying to show you, my friend. I'm trying to show you be, just because you are doing what you're supposed to do, that does not say that the devil is not going to do everything he can to disrupt you and to destroy you and to get you off course. That's what I'm trying to get across to you. Sometimes we think, you know, in fact, we, you know, and I know what this thinking is like. We think, dear God, when all hell breaks loose, we think, dear God, I must have missed it. No, you didn't. Not necessarily, now you may have missed it, but just because all hell broke loose don't mean that you missed it. In fact, that is evidence that you didn't miss it when all hell breaks loose, so to speak. Because devils get upset when they see you. But now your responsibility is to understand what's going on and don't respond in a negative, wrong way. Respond only the way that the Spirit of God inside you directs you to respond. That's what you've got to do. Yeah. You just can't get mad and bent out of shape just because somebody starts doing, treating you wrong and then all of a sudden let your flesh respond to that. Right. You can't do that. Right. If Paul and them had responded in the flesh, it would have been a ruckus going on out there. Uh -huh. It wouldn't have been, shucks, man, it would have been a mess going on out there. But they didn't. They threw him in prison, commanding the jailer to keep them securely. Having received such a charge, he put them into the inner prison and fastened their feet 
in the stocks. Man, if they had killed somebody, you wouldn't have done no more than that to them. And all they did was preach. All they did was went to prayer meetings. I'm trying to show you, I'm trying to show you something, folks. And now, now here's the thing. The devil is the same devil today that he was then. And the devil will do whatever he can. He will stir up whoever he can stir up to come against you for the gospel's sake. And you need to understand that. But we think, see, we, we respond to people like people do stuff to us. You can't do it that way. See, this is an area of Christianity that you need to be taught and understand. You, 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 have to, you have to live in the Spirit, and you only respond as the Spirit directs you to respond. Because God will show you how to respond to every situation. But if you go off into the flesh and start responding according to the dictates of the flesh, you may end up anywhere. And many do. Many Christians do. See, I'm trying to tell you, you are just as much in the Spirit in response to persecutions as you are when you praying in your closet by yourself. Amen. You are just as much in the Spirit. And you're responsible to listen to the Spirit of God. And follow. See, if you listen, learn to listen to the Spirit of God, you won't ever get off in the flesh and you won't be missing God. See, Now look at what happened to these people. Look at what happened to the Apostle Paul. Now, having received such a charge, he put them into the inner prison and fastened their feet in stock. Now watch this. Now here, now can you imagine, here's Paul and Silas in jail, feet in stocks, and stocks, the way, I, the way they show me those ancient stocks, they're not comfortable, it's not a comfortable position. They got you just kind of hunched up there like this, you know, feet, feet. I don't know if they had hands in stocks or not, but I've seen it with the feet and hand stocks. But it's not comfortable. And there they are. What do you do? Well, it's time to complain about what's been happening. It's time to get a petition going. No, 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 no. God didn't say get no petition. See, see, here's the thing. Many Christians have missed it because they responded according to the flesh rather than according to the dictates of the Holy Spirit that's inside of them. If you will stop and listen to God and let God tell you what to do when opposition rises, you will always come out smelling like a rose. Amen. But you see, we figure automatically, well, dear God, you slap me, I'm going to give you some of this. See, that's the right thing to do. That's not the right thing. Now, unless God tell you to do that. Right. Now, if God tell you to give him some of this, then you give him some of that. <laughs> no, I'm telling you, that's the way it is. I don't know what he's going to tell you to do. But don't you do anything and don't be trying to coach God to help you to tell to, to, to. <laughs> You just let God direct you and tell you what to do. I'm telling you. You have to do it that way. <laughs> See, if you want to come out of that thing right. Now, look at what happened at midnight. Here these guys are in jail, in stocks, mm -hmm. not comfortable, and they haven't done anything. I mean, it's bad enough to go to jail when you've done, done, when you've done something. Right. But when you have not done anything worthy of being in jail, and there you are in jail, that could really rattle your cage. Amen. And you and I both know that. I mean, come on. Suppose that someone pull you over and give you a ticket on your way home tonight, and you know good and right well you weren't speeding. You would, fit to be, you would be fit to be tired. You probably wouldn't sleep a wink. Can't wait till tomorrow morning. I was just riding on there and picked me right out. All the guy run past and zoomed on it, and he picked me, and I know I was not speeding. I know I didn't run that light. And you got a ticket for it. For something that you didn't do. See, that's no joke. See, see these are real. That's real. They just, when you are, you are being punished for something that you did not do, how many are going to call a prayer meeting? See, people, this, now, now, now either you will do it the God way or you will just live in a tailspin the rest of your life because... The church has not changed, the devil has not gotten saved, and the standards of holiness have not shifted. Amen. They are the same today as they was then. Amen. But yet we seem to think we can do, respond differently and get positive results. No, you're not. Now, I know this is, t I know this is, this is, 
this is not good. good. This is that kind of stuff you, ha, dear Lord, come on, come on, come on. You mean you're going to just make a rug out of me? Maybe so. I don't know. See, here's the thing, and we're going to get to this because I want you to understand this. There's a lot of, there's a lot of information here. You, as a believer, have the ability to be walked on and continue to march and be totally successful. You, as a believer, has the ability to be totally mistreated and continue to march. Now, whether you exercise your abilities or not, whether you exercise that is up to you. But you have, you have the God inside of you Amen. Yeah. Praise God. that gives you the ability uh -huh. to be totally mistreated, to be totally wronged. Mm. And keep a smile on your face and go forward. Amen. 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 Praise God. Now, I've been there. I, I've been there. I have, I've had people to just tell, just, 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 just. Bare-faced lies or bald-faced lies. Uh -huh. Just flat lie. Uh -huh. The tip, typical, typical thing to do is just raise some ruckus, man. Uh -huh. yeah. Wrong by my business. I just, I just can't. Well, I'm not bragging on me. That's the God that's in me. See, you, see, you, you can't do it. I, I, see, I'll tell you right now, don't, don't, don't you mess with me. We're going to get it on. But the God that's inside of me you understand what I'm saying? Amen. Amen. I, I, my, I try to stay in a position to let the God inside of me yeah. dominate Hallelujah. all the time. Amen. And that's what I'm talking about. Amen. I'm not talking about you. Your flesh can't, can't do that. Amen. Don't even try it. So true. But if you're living in the spirit, uh -huh. then you can do it. Amen. You can do it. Amen. If you find yourself in a tailspin, you know you're out of the spirit. I knew, and I know that don't sound good, but if you're in a tailspin, you're out of the spirit. I can tell you that. I guarantee you that. Amen. Guarantee you that. Amen. See, because see, see, here's the stuff that, that you're able to do. Now, at midnight, the Bible says, Paul and Silas were praying, dear Lord, dear Lord, <laughs> why are they in jail? For praying. And he's still praying. Hallelujah. See that? You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Now, 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 see, I know, you know, I probably can pan this assembly here and say, who can do that? And, you know, it's going to be kind of, whoa, boy, that's tight. But that's where you get what you, you have to do that. No, no, no. This is the church. It's the same church that you're in. This is not, you know, this, you know, and, and I'm telling you, we think, we think that, you know,